Oh, shit. Hey, hey. First one on, Team David Meltzer. Let's pin up training today, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Let's fire it up. Get it going. Brooke, welcome, everybody. We're going to start off right with Cindy Eckert. I know she's coming on. She's the host of the Pink Cast podcast. And uh, Jake, thanks. Great to see you. Brody, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's everybody join in. It's going to be a great day. We got training today on how to build an audience, how to build a community. Looking good, everybody. Looking very good. All right. So I see Cindy there. If we can request going live, we'll get this going. Get some questions going for when I'm done with Cindy. And she is the CEO at the Pink Ceiling and Sprout Pharmaceuticals. We're trying to get her on here. There we go. She has requested us, and we are right on it. Get her. Unbelievable. Good morning, Geronimo. Welcome, 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 everybody. It is a big day. Friday is my favorite day of every day. Hey, There's David. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. Awesome. Let me get me self-centered here. <laughs> Perfect. Well, anyway, you are like me, a serial entrepreneur, self-made yes. by self-made by the way. I feel so, <laughs> so sorry for all those people that have been given everything. <laughs> I used no to be doubt. I used to be jealous of them. That was like my biggest hang up as a little kid and now I feel sorry for them. <laughs> right? I always equate it to like IKEA furniture. You know, if you build it from scratch, you love it a little bit more. Oh, so if so you true. earn it, right? From the start, it's an entirely different appreciation I think of where we've gotten. I'm so still that analogy you. We have with my so kids. many mutual friends. David yeah. is such a rock star oh. uh, and every single person uh, that I talked to is like, why don't you and David know each other? So I'm so glad we got to do this today. Thank you for having me. We, everything happens at the right way at the perfect time, right? We just weren't ready for the energy yet. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Hi, Amanda. <laughs> anyway, give me an idea about the pink ceiling and what's going on with your podcast and everything. I just want everybody to know what you're doing. And yeah. then we'll talk about some of the challenges or lessons that you've learned. Totally. So I'm like David, serial entrepreneur. I built and sold two uh, healthcare companies. My last one I sold for a billion dollars, which was- That's with a B, everyone. Who knew? Like this, this girl from upstate New York was going to go on and do this. And you know, it's an incredible opportunity to decide what am I going to do in this world? And what was so clear to me is my best work would be to reach my hand back and get other women there faster than I got there myself. So money where my mouth is. Uh, it's not a fund. It's my own money. And I bet on real disruptors. So, you know, the underdogs overlooked by the system, they're not getting the traditional VC money. And they're probably taking on some pretty crazy ideas. Uh, I, David knows that I'm best known for getting the first ever drug for women's sexual desire through the FDA. You better believe I was laughed out of every room <laughs> when I showed up <laughs> pitching that. Um, and so those are the kind of ideas I bet on, mostly health and wellness. And um, what happens when they, we pick them inside of the incubator is we really roll our sleeves up alongside them. So they get access to my business team who've helped me build two successful businesses and we get them to finish lines. You know, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on to share, and obviously I'm sure we'll do a podcast swap someday and really get oh, into some yeah. serious detail, but... I love to, to understand the segmentation. You talked about people laughing at you, making fun of you, scoffing yeah. at you. And, and that's just not people like VCs and, and business people. That's like family and friends. Of course. Right? And, yeah. and those are the ones yeah. that really hurt. Like I never cared if somebody in business told me I was crazy. That right. never bothered me. But like to go against my mom, and I'm 52 yeah. years old, and yeah. every time my mom says something about like, oh, Dave, who do you think you are, Tony Robbins? You know, like when I first started, like my friends think you're, you're, you're uh, there's too many videos, you know, it like, I have to tell you, it still hits me in my core. Like right here. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God, David, I have to tell you a story. So I'm very close to both of my parents. My parents have been instrumental in my life, but I got on Tim Ferriss, had me on his podcast. And you know, those are like two hour long podcasts. And so I was so excited about it. I told my mom, like, mom, you need to listen to this. I'm on Tim Ferriss. And she said, how long is it? And I said, it's two hours. She's like, yeah, even I don't love you that much. <laughs> but there I is love that. Something very grounding in that. They're never impressed. Um, you know, they're like, go prove it again. Like, go tell us something else. And it's good because it fuels your drive, right? To keep going. 
Absolutely. And, you know, it's so funny, too, because my wife is super, super supportive. And so I know when she thinks something's either a bad idea or whatever, but she's also very honest. And I wrote a book, uh, Compassionate Capitalism. Yeah. And I wrote it with Blaine Bartlett. And it's a, you know, it's a very high vibrational book. It's extremely, it's, you know, like kind of world business consultant is the spectrum. It's not like yeah. connected to goodness is made for everyone in the world. You yeah. know, it's kind of like the think and grow rich. But this book is very specific. It's a business book. So she started reading it. She looked up at me. When she read Connected to Goodness, she cried. And she goes, this is one of the most beautiful books oh. I've ever read. When she read Capacity to Capitalism, she looked at me and she goes, I'm sorry, I can't finish. I was, I was like, you've read 20 pages. She goes, don't care. Not for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, was, it was so good. Um, good. To, to that matter, you have the Pinkubator. Hey, and, Mateo, I'll just say hi. I see so yeah, many friends on everyone. here. <laughs> um, the Pinkubator really interests me because so many people, yeah. especially, you know, I'm the Chief Chancellor of Junior Achievement University with a lot of our shared acquaintances, our chancellors as well. Yeah. And it's something I'd love for you actually to consider because over 50% yeah, awesome. of my junior achievement entrepreneurs are women now. And when I was a little boy, I always said there's only one girl. I was 12 as a junior achievement person. There's yeah. only one girl, right, in the whole thing. Incredible. Right. Really? And so over 50% women now. And I think, you know, a lot of women, to get it to a little more detail, are afraid to, like, under, to, to go and present a business yeah. because, you know, like, I know Kate is one of the people that, that are on here a lot of times. I, I, unfortunately, I'm, hopefully she's watching. Um, like, she has this really cool fitness idea, wellness idea with yeah. hula hoops. And oh, like cool. her whole family's just all over her. And I coach her a little and I'm like, stop listening to like, yeah. even what your husband says, yeah. just talk about what his role is of being a supportive spouse. Yes. And that if, he, if he's, you know, can just do that, you know, yep. stay out of the business because I just have to tell you, if you came to me, you know, a long time ago and said, Dave, I want to do the, you know, to, in height, to heighten women's sexuality. The female and, Viagra. <laughs> yeah, female Viagra. I'm not sure I would have like put you in front of Sequoia or yeah. as my own wife, right? It tried I to help it. because I would yeah. have been embarrassed. And, yeah. and I'm just being very honest. It has nothing to do, but it just shows you don't know. And all the greatest winners out there are people like you. How, how and what is the process to get people in front of, whether it's the Pinkubator yeah. or Sequoia, you know, you've gone through that process. Yeah. Can you help? you know, especially women with the understanding sure. of this is how you do it. Well, first I want to say something to Kate because, and David knows this quote, I know, and I promise you this is a description of my entire career. It's a Gandhi quote. And it is, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. And I think you have to be- And then they're really jealous of you or applaud comfortable, you. Comfortable, <laughs> right? At every stage of that, you have to just power through. So if her family's, you know, in her head, She's just got to like the laugh at you phase. You have to be so firm in your conviction. You're just going to not care and you're going to stay right on that path. You know, from the Pinkubator perspective, people can reach out to us um, at thepinksealing.com to pitch us. But I will tell them, you know, when we get in, into pitches, we get really nervous. Um, and you have a tendency as a founder, you want to tell them everything, everything, everything. Actually, less is more. We're on our first date. All you got to do is get to the second. Don't look for a ring at the end of that. It's better to just get to the second date. And if you can organize your thoughts that ladder up to these three things, you will probably compel me in that first meeting. And that is, you got to tell me what you're uniquely trying to do. You've got to tell me why you're the one to do it. And I would argue that's the most important piece. And you got to tell me what's in it for me if I go on the ride with you. And I think that we miss that sometimes. You know, I really do believe there's, I'm fortunate to see brilliant ideas every day. Like how lucky am I that people walk into my office with these incredible ideas, but a brilliant idea in the wrong hands goes nowhere. A good idea, just a good idea, not even a great idea, but a good idea in the right hands can be shaped into a game changer. And that's, I am always betting on the person. And I would say, you know, just for everybody, whether you're walking in on Sand Hill Road in Silicon Valley and asking for money, or you're walking into the Pinkubator, you've got to just be obsessive about this idea. And you've got to teach me those three things in a very quick window. And I think you talked about one word that I look for as well, because I invest in the entrepreneur, as you know, yeah. um, because I can evolve a business. I like you have a great relationship capital. Now we have each other too, but, yes. but those are the people that will help coach. But the one thing I can't teach, it's a common denominator 
that exists between people like you and I and others, athletes, celebrities, entertainers at the top of their game, the, the billionaires that I know, the Dave McCourts and the Tillman Fertitas and, you know, who, some, some of my friends. Tillman's like, a character. Cuban, yeah, Tillman and Cuban right now are like, they're facing serious challenges, but yeah. I have no fear that they're going to, they're so resilient, but they have this one common denominator, and you mentioned it, and it goes beyond just obsessive. It's this obsessive desire that you must be what you can be. If I can, if I can get somebody to show me that, they, yeah. in my opinion, they can have a bad idea because if yeah. I can find somebody, if I can give them a better idea yes. and just shift it, like I'll give you an example. One of this women that I'm going to refer to you, she has, it was a bad idea. She wanted to compete against Uber and, and Grubhub, like Uber Eats, but yeah. for, mar for marijuana. But okay. one, of, one of the components that she has is a, a safety box for CBD and, and marijuana mm -hmm. that can be used also for food which is on, on the app. So you can, you can track that no one's touched your food, right? Cause they put it, you know, like in the big pizza yeah, yeah. plastic. So he created this container that oh, cool. interacts with an app. So, but, but, so this is, she's oh pitching gosh. a bad idea. Yes. But she's she, like her husband's an MMA star and yeah. she's like a vicious, like I call a ferocious Buddha. Yeah, I like, love it. She's going to be up all night. She's I never going to quit. She, she's not in the 99% that's going to quit at 25% or even the 99 of the 1%. And she had no idea that she had the good idea. But yeah. those are the types of examples that you and I get yeah. to see all the time. Totally. And the, the most disappointing is when I find someone that literally has channeled or downloaded this extraordinary idea. Yeah. And I don't care for the rest of six lifetimes, they're yeah. never going to be able to take it to market. Totally. I see them. It's so frustrating because you wish it could be in those hands of the woman you just described. I think, look, it takes courage to start something. It's an entirely different level of courage to finish it. Win or lose, win or lose, that you will see it all the way through, that you will leave it all on the field and go for it. I mean, that is really that difference that we're looking for. You told uh, the story um, that you know she's going to wake up every day and like just kill herself to get it done. I was in a, um, I had some of my friends with me, very sort of classical investors. Um, I feel like I'm a little bit of a misfit. So, you know, I, I look <laughs> at things a little differently. Like we look at things a little differently. And um, I was sitting in a meeting, in the middle of the meeting, the woman that was pitching just broke into tears. We weren't even like testing her. She just was overcome, I think in the moment of like the stakes, right? And the, the guy sitting next to me, it could have been a woman, right? Just classic kind of minded was looking at me like, you know, why aren't you going after her? Why aren't you telling her like, you, you don't have what it takes. You can't show this kind of emotion. I said, are you kidding me? We walked out of the room. We had this debrief. I said, that's the moment I knew I was in. And I knew I was in because what that told me is how much this meant to her and how she was going to wake up every day and just work as hard as she knew how to get it done. Like that, I want that kind of emotion. I have that kind of emotion around every idea I've ever embraced. I do yeah. cry when, it's, when, when the stakes are high. It's okay. And actually the vulnerability, the authenticity of that, that means so much to me as an investor because we're going to be on this ride together for a little while. I'm in the, the same boat. I, you know, I cry almost every time I step on a stage yeah. and, you know, and my girls are like, dad, especially with, you know, the, the aspect of being one of the older people on Instagram and, yeah. you know, they're like, dad, you know, and I was like, you know what? I just care. Like I, to, yeah. to me, it's like, if I talk about my mom and get choked up or I talk about the yeah. jacket my dad bought me, or I, I talk about yeah. something and I can't, I'm over, I'm overwhelmed with energy and motion, but yeah. that's the same energy that keeps me motivated and inspired, you right? It, ex exactly, and I'm the same way if, you know, I have an employee and, and some of them will break down crying because they care so much or they're so frustrated, yeah. which to me is much better than, you know, the guy who's sitting upstairs right now watching, you know, in Instagram all day and pretending yeah. like he's doing his job. And, right. I, and I say to him, hey, do you got this ready for me? Oh no, I'm not doing it now like you told me and gives me yeah. the patronizing, Hey, sorry, you know, I'll do what it takes. I'm, and, and I'd see right through that. Like, are of you course. kidding me? I'd rather someone <laughs> that, like, I'd rather someone work for me that I, I look at wrong and yeah. starts to cry yeah. because they want to do such a good job for yes. the company and, and me and all of that. And people yeah. don't see that. I can see the people around me looking at me like, why is he or she crying? Like, right. dude, we're not, we're not doing anything with this person. And I'd be like you, 
Oh no, yeah. I can I can do I can do something with this. This is yeah, this is caring, right? Caring yeah. about a good job and everything else. Yeah, um, one of the great things, and in, in people, it, it becomes a detriment to people when they become very successful, and it's that you lose credibility of how what it took to get there. Yeah. Right. They they immediately think you're an overnight success. One of my <laughs> best friends is like. <laughs> Uh, he created Pictionary and just yeah. his journey didn't stop after he sold Pictionary to right. Hasbro or whatever, because then he was smart enough to invest and, in, you know, he's close to a billionaire himself now, but you know, people don't realize he's sitting at the bottom of Nordstrom's escalator telling people to buy a game with a pencil and a piece of paper yes. for 30 bucks. Right. Yes. <laughs> and every single day, what that must feel like to, yep. to do that. Wh where was that point? Like that? I'd love to hear that story as we finish up. Everybody has one where yeah. you were standing at the, you know, analogously standing yeah. at the bottom of an escalator all day long with people <laughs> like looking at you, like, why would this lady dedicate her life to this? You, oh you my know? God, how many of those stories do you want? Because I just I'm want sorry, one, I want a good one. <laughs> yeah, but, I, but it's so important for these people to hear these stories. Yeah, listen, I mean, I had, um, <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I'll, I'm gonna. I'm trying to pick from the plethora there are. So uh, I did have a story at an escalator. I will tell you where I had um, just started my first company, and I had invited all of these, you know, key opinion leaders in the space to come and have lunch, right? And I had worked so hard. I had been burning the phones. I had gotten their commitments. I had done everything, and I was waiting to collect them all on a bus. And guess how many showed up? None. <laughs> <laughs> The loneliest feeling in the world. I felt like somebody at the airport with a sign and just like everybody kept walking past me. Nobody came to my lunch. Um, I then, I mailed out my first company. I have to tell the story too. It was called Slate. Uh, and truly because clean slate, I was going to do it on my own damn terms. I was going to make my messes, but I'd have to clean them up. And so I sent out these little slate pots, like a little flower pot with seeds in it. And I thought it was so cute. I was like, watch us grow, you know, grow with us. I sent them out and I was so excited and my phone started to ring and I was like, oh my gosh. And every single person who called me, called me to tell me that it had broken in the mail and they wanted another one. Oh, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, I so still cool. have one of those sitting on my desk. I mean, I have stories like that for days, but you know, that's the folklore, like that's the fun. I look back to those moments with my team and so many of them now have been with me through three companies. We laugh our asses off over those stories, but you're absolutely right. There's no such thing as an overnight success story. There's, you know, even to this day, people will say, well, what did you do when you had a billion dollar exit? You know what I did? I got up the next day and I went to work. Right on. I love to do. Yeah, yeah. You've learned to love to do it. And yep. I think that's the key component. You're someone who truly finds the light, the love and the lessons yeah. in what's going on. And that's what it takes to get to the places that we get to go to and others to inspire them. And I love the fact that you walk the walk that a lot of people do when they have that exit, not only don't show up to work the next day, but then they don't realize that everything that you've received is through you for others. Right. 100%. And that, and, 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 and that's the real bonus that to me, when I tell people, I know the one thing I can share with you what it's like to make a lot of money, yeah. but you'll get that. And, and, it, and I can convey that to you. What I can't convey is what it means, what I do with that money purpose. Yes. Because I have used money non-purposely. I always use it as an indicator. I use money one time to buy things I didn't need to impress people I didn't like. Yeah. But once I shifted the paradigm, instead of giving to get as a trade or a negotiation, which I'm good at, yeah. was to receive, to come through me with appreciation, gratitude, and adding my value, my yeah. personal inspiration, and giving my life away. That is, and then I, it just comes, right? And it's so beautiful, and it's just going to come for you. And what you're doing, I can't wait to do more conversations. Me I know too. this is a star. I, I was begged, like, literally, everyone's like, you got you to gotta get together with Cindy, and it's been a <laughs> while. Fred, your name's come up with me so many times, That's and awesome. I am absolutely so proud of you having you. a 10 year old son and three daughters to look up to and watch and see people because if they don't see it a lot of people will never ever go past yeah. it right you got to mm -hmm. see the finish line to go past the finish line and we're not expanding and growing without people like you cindy so thank you so thank much you, for Jamie. coming on thank you for having me thanks to well, everybody who joined happy Friday. Yeah, thank you. talk to you soon bye now have a great weekend you too
Ah, there you go. Cindy Eckert, The Pink Ceiling, Sprout Pharmaceuticals, host of the Pink Cast podcast, which uh, we'll do a podcast swap. I want her on the playbook. Absolutely. The killer, killer entrepreneur. Unbelievable. What a great icon. Uh, and you can see, you know, her story reminds me when I first started speaking, I, I was doing some business up in Seattle. Uh, my business partner lived up there and I stayed uh, an extra night because I had a speaking engagement at the University of Seattle. And it ended up, they made a mistake and it was midterms and pouring rain. Anyway, um, and I invited my friend who founded Pictionary to come. Uh, and at the time I got a lot of heat about, you know, you're not, this is not your job. You're not a speaker. You're not doing this, this, your mission of empowering a billion people to be happy is ridiculous. And I showed up and one person showed up. And everybody's like apologizing to me. My friend's laughing at me. Everybody's like, what are we doing? And they say, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to give my speech. Um, which still to this day was one of the best speeches because uh, the one person that did show up in the rain during midterms needed to hear what I was saying and actually told me at the end uh, that they were really having a hard time and, you know, even questioning their existence. And uh, my speech had inspired them in a whole nother direction, not to, to, to quit at all. Let's just put it that way. And uh, so you never know. You never know. Just stick to what you know. Find the light, the love, and the lessons in what we do. Uh, build your own community one person at a time, just like Cindy, just like myself. You'll get there at the right way at the perfect time. The coincidences, the mathematical currents of things happening at the right way at the perfect time. The luck, as other people call it, will happen, I promise you. Uh, come to my training to build that community and your audience. We're going to talk about it today, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Text me to register at 949-298-2905 or just go to dmeltzer.com forward slash training or david at dmeltzer.com. It's all pinned below. So check it out. Welcome, 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 everyone. Uh, let's take a couple questions. Thank you, team, for helping me out. Uh, what's the biggest lesson you've learned from times of uncertainty? Uh, that there's always times of uncertainty. That's the top lesson I've learned. There's all, future's uncertain. So I better figure out a philosophy if certainty is compressed or extended, I better figure out a strategy of philosophy how to deal with uncertainty because the future is always uncertain. If you are out there and you are the only person that I've ever met that is certain about the future and can guarantee it, please call me because I'll never have to work again and I can give billions of dollars away. I know exactly what to do. If you know the future, please call me. We can make billions of dollars together and change the world. We can give it all to the environment, to uh, equality, whatever you wanna give it to. Please, if you're out there with the one person out there that I've never met, and you are certain about the future and can guarantee it, please call me. We can make a fortune together and help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. We'll meet our mission of empowering over a billion people to be happy in a very quick way. Uh, so please. But yes, I practice understanding how to act in certainty. That's the lesson that I learned. At what point should you begin monetizing your audience? When they ask you to do something that you can provide more value or guarantee a profit. So your audience will make requests from you and you should monetize that if you can be a part, a collaborative, a commander with them, working with them to create a profit and guarantee that profit. That's why I only work month to month with people who request my help and I can guarantee profitability. I mitigate all risks with anyone that works with me for that very reason. Um, and I give everything else away for free. My podcast, you want my book? Go ahead, email me. Go to that site, dmeltzer.com, david at dmeltzer.com. I will give you my book for free, I'm training for free. And if you have something I can help you with that we can make money together, if I can guarantee profitability, I'll do it. All right? Does that sound fair? Cool. What is the first thing you should focus on when building your audience? Uh, a lot of audience questions for training. A lot of softballs there, guys. Um, so obviously one person at a time, you need to find your frequency, but we'll talk about that at 11 o'clock in a couple hours. So 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time, register if you haven't already, show up if you have, thousands and thousands and thousands of people have registered. So please either show up or watch the replay. They're all available at dmeltzer.com. Go ahead, you can find that. How should I make a team? I need a team. 
First, what you need to do is understand uh, the learning stage of your business. What are the capabilities that you need or want and where can you create a break-even scenario and how long will it take according to your time and risk tolerance? That's what you need to do first. Uh, and when you figure out those criteria, you can then start making an ask in person on the phone via email and media, radio, print TV, and social media on how to attain that service or value and see what service or value you can provide as well. What values you can teach, what techniques, skills, capabilities that you can help with, knowledge that you can provide, all of those different things. So coordinate and uh, create. Here we go. Uh, going down. What do you mean by the ball finds the weakest player? Uh, spoken from who used to be one of my weakest players. Nice. Um, the ball always finds the weakest player. It's the same way that water will find the leak, right? The crack. Uh, it's just the laws of the universe that the force of energy will always find the lowest energy. And so when there is a decision-making process, when there is imperative business being done, when there's value needed, the subtlety, the crack in the system, the weakest player will be availed, right? It'll find it and you'll be able to see who's not doing their job, who's lying, manipulating, overselling, back-end selling you. And it happens every day within a team. Somebody's lying, overselling, manipulating, cheating you. You, a teammate, or you, the boss, whatever, you, the coach, you, the owner of the team. The ball always finds the weakest player, and it's revealed when the game gets tight. It's always revealed when the pressure's on. When you squeeze a lemon, right, lemon juice comes out. Why? Because that's what's inside a lemon. So when we squeeze a circumstance into compressed times of uncertainty, the player with the weakest talent, skills, capabilities, knowledge is going to be exposed. The ball will find the weakest player. How does one guarantee profitability? Uh, great question. So in my case, what I do is I work month to month with people and whatever I charge them, I guarantee they will make more money than they pay me. That's math. That's profit. And I guarantee it. I mitigate all risks. So, uh, and I make sure it puts a qualification process. If I can't do that, then I'm not going to work with you in, in that respect. I will give you free training and free books and free exercises and free guides and free videos to help you get to a point where I might be able to utilize what you're doing to be profitable. Uh, but as far as my business of making money, helping people and having fun, I can't do something just to be paid for subjective value. Subjective value is a Barney value, right? I love you. You love me. Nobody makes any money. And we just hug each other. That's not happening. Uh, profitability, quantitative value is what you look for. And you want to guarantee it in everything that you do. If you can't guarantee it, you shouldn't be in business, right? If you don't believe enough to put your money behind what you're doing, mitigate all risks. Don't have to lock somebody in. E even if you know it's a longer term project and you're looking at, guarantee your value that you're moving in the pace that they want you to move, that you're following up that you're a way maker, a promise keeper. It's old biblical terms, right? Study history, learn human nature. Way maker, promise keeper. Old Testament, New Testament, Kabbalah, all talks about being a way maker and a promise keeper. That's what guaranteeing profitability is. What's some of your most memorable memories? I love that. <laughs> Building your first business. Um, most memorable memories building my first business. How idiotic I was, right? I think... You know, this, knowing what I don't know are my favorite memories. The way that, you know, I used to, uh, you know, inspire people, which was really just motivation and so money, like oriented that I could incentivize people with money and not with values. Uh, and so it's so fun. You know, I have the most extraordinary team at my company and they're inspired by values. They're inspired by inspiring others. Uh, and ironically, the business is more successful than any other business that I've had uh, without pushing them uh, on the money side. But we make a lot of money, help a lot of people, and have a lot of fun at David Meltzer Enterprises. That's what I like. What's the biggest mistake you see people making on social media? Uh, frequency. I, I see people are just inconsistent. Or two, they're not willing to practice their valuable content with that consistency. So... You know, the frequencies are so broad and the spectrum is so wide that they don't practice the clarity of their message and they don't put it up there. Much. They, they literally believe that people right away get what they're saying and will be motivated and inspired by that. 
All right, let's go live here. I see one of my true uh, celebrity entrepreneurs, uh, great athlete, uh, and uh, right here, the Arizona's finest. Let's see here, Akeem, in the house, tight end, but founder of Perspective Global Media, played for the Giants, the Lions, and, of course, the Cardinals. There he is. Dave, what's going on, my friend? How are you? Hey, hey. I have two extraordinary entrepreneurs today. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Just trying to, you know, stay sane and stay on offense throughout the uh, the madness. Well, you're no stranger to consistent behavior and allowing, you know, uncertain circumstances to hold you back. You are a resilient guy, whether it was playing on the field or what is more impressive to me, your off the field attributes of an entrepreneur. You are, you know, just we have such a kindred spirit because you're always looking at how you can make more money, help more people and have more fun with your life. So, I know you do a lot of real estate and you probably, you, you've had side hustles since you were in, uh, selling Skittles. I think it was when you were a kid, right? Where, weren't yes, you going sir. to Sam's club and selling stuff to me? And you did sell the pur purple wild berry Skittles was my, my niche. <laughs> you guys, he knew at a young age and you're, you're someone who actually has chosen to be an entrepreneur over playing professional football. I know it's a lot better for the mind but a lot of people out there can never imagine emotionally or soulfully how you can give that up to be an entrepreneur. But you are as passionate about being an entrepreneur as you were about playing football. Uh, what, what has changed for you with these new circumstances in the new playing field that we've been given? They, you know, they changed our rules, man. They gave us a new field and new rules, uh, which to me smells like opportunity for a guy like Hakeem. What are you doing? Absolutely. I mean, since the last time we've talked, um, which is, few months ago I, I've, I've hired probably 10 people on my team um my media company actually I don't even know if I even launched my media company since the last time we talked but we, we made a pivot and our focus is uh podcast production um which has been an interesting space to play in you know amongst everyone being at home in the real estate space I've been staying on the sideline in terms of just watching what's going on but I actually just uh that fourplex, that four unit apartment building from Phoenix, I actually just, uh, we just went under contract this week. Um, was able to make a solid penny on it and put, made no repairs to it over the last four years since I've had it. Um, but otherwise, that, just trying to stay on offense, consistently putting out content, got on TikTok, been uh, doing, I mean, I, I'd really just, I've really been just listening to Gary's advice and uh, trying to just put my foot on the gas with it. And over the last week, I think I've gotten about 10,000 followers on TikTok, which has been really exciting. It's been an interesting space to play in as well. Yeah, I've been doing the same thing, but it's I'm you know 20 or more years older than you. So I'm like <laughs> already the oldest guy on Instagram. Now I'm trying to do TikToks without dancing. But I think they're going to shift to education, which is really going to help me uh, to give them some longevity. But, you know, the podcast space is so interesting. You know, I'm blessed to have started my podcast, you know, now years ago and having hundreds of people like you to help facilitate great knowledge within it in the context of distribution. But there's, you know, an extraordinary amount of people that need podcast production and you're in a great space uh, with Perspective Global Media. You know, can you help people understand what it is that you do when you say that you do podcast production so that more people can reach out to you? Because there's thousands of people every day that need your help. Absolutely. So essentially what we do is, is that we have a 90 day product where we essentially hold your hand through episode four of your podcast. You know, what we found is a lot of people, there's a lot of inconsistencies with starting a show. A lot of people start a show and maybe go too hard that first week and then they burn out and then they get to episode five or six and then they stop. Or as you know, the podcast space is extremely saturated right now. So a lot of people will have a show that's not necessarily niched down and not necessarily having an objective of what they want to achieve. Cause I think a podcast can, uh, can serve like a multifaceted approach in terms of what you can achieve from it, whether it's, you know, obtaining a, 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 a monstrous audience, like deep down in that niche, or I think a podcast is a, a great, great tool for lead gen and whatever you're doing in your business. Like, you know, perfect example. I have a podcast. One of my podcasts is called the St. Louis small business podcast. Um, because my media company, we actually work with small businesses as well. And it's, it's been one of our number one lead gen tools um, on top of it. But really what we do is those first 30 days of our 90 day product is really just getting your messaging down. 
second 30 days is getting your first two episodes launched. And then the final 30 days is getting your last two episodes launched. And what our team does is on the back end, we post produce the content, you know, the type of content that you see on your Instagram and your LinkedIn page, the type of stuff you see on Gary's page, the type of stuff you see on my page, you know, upper thirds, subtitles, the whole nine yards, because I think a lot of people put, put the full episode of a podcast on a pedestal. And I think the true value is extracted from the micro content. Cause a lot of people, you see it every day on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Instagram. Hey guys, just did this new episode with Dave Meltzer. Here's the link, check it out. And we, we create too much friction for our end audience because when we're in Instagram mode or Facebook mode or LinkedIn mode, we're in that mode. We're not about to put our headphones in and listen to us for 45 minutes. Instead, you give it to them contextually on each platform. And that's really what we're holding their hands and helping them do. Yeah, I use the analogy all the time. It's like people, you, you have them, they're in line at In-N-Out Burger and they get up to the window and you say, oh, wait, wait, why don't you park your car and come on in? I have a steak and lobster meal for the next two hours for you. And, and you and, right and as much as someone likes steak and lobster and it's the highest quality you know tillman frittita you know the the mastro's meal you know only you know the 0.001 percent would actually come in to, to eat that meal even if you gave it for free right and yet they expect them to, to do that when they're in line and in and out looking for a quick burger to get through through there and that's the exact analogy the other thing that you know i'm doing a training today on building an audience and you're an expert at understanding, and very few people are, the idea of spectrum, like the powerful. And I think it comes from being in real estate where you know that when you have that fourplex, you know where the spectrum of buyers are, right? You, you, you know who that is and where that spectrum is. It isn't, you know, some guy in Australia, you know, that's a technology <laughs> uh, CMO, right? You're not going to market to CMOs in Australia, Right. That's real. And, we're actually selling, and, and I, we're selling it to the neighbor who this uh, the neighbor who. Oh, uh, he'll he'll come back on. He just dropped. You know, the Arizona they uh they have shoddy internet there. <laughs> it's because all the aliens are next door in in New Mexico messing up uh <laughs> messing up their, their connectivity. Oh, I lost that key. Let me grab him real quick again. All right. Sorry. This is super, super powerful, especially pertaining to the training I got today at 11 a.m. Building an audience. This guy's a master at it. There he is. Sorry, sorry, sorry about that. But uh, you there? We, uh, <laughs> we, uh, we're, we're selling it to the neighbor, back to Spectrum and, you know, figuring out who the right people to market to. It's uh, one of our neighbors. He's, a, he's an investor. You know, she's an investor herself. And uh, they're looking to buy almost that entire neighborhood. And it was a perfect play. Yeah. And I think that's the same thing with whether it's podcast or content. And I remember when I started with Gary years ago, we were both doing these vlogs, right? And what made it really difficult with the, the vlog is they were expensive. They were super long, but like all the media guys wanted to be the next Steven Spielberg. And so those media guys were pushing, you know, the business people like you and I that understand how business is done because there's some creative entertainment that, nobody watches but when you put it into bite-sized capital when you put it through the in and out burger window in order to effectuate that uh it, it really helps and i you're the first person out of everyone that i've had in this podcast space that gets the fact that when you talked about small st louis small business podcast that's where you want to be like you want to be the lady who's the expert at opening up you know presents for kids or toys for kids, or you want to be the expert at, you know, I would rather see someone tell me, I have a podcast that's about pink nail polish and how to apply and to remove pink nail polish. I, I literally would rather have someone tell me that than they just rename, you know, my podcast, The Playbook, that took 35 years of building relationships, understanding media marketing and advertising, pouring a lot of resources into it, to have you know the top names in entertainment sports and in business in there and yet somebody thinks you know oh I, i'm just going to do the same thing with yours but i'm going to name it this i want to do i'm like no 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 do what you do i did what i did and you That's do real. you know i love you're doing what you do um how do you manage people's expectations though about audience you know i'm doing this training about building an audience a community you know i went in because i have years of experience of 
building an audience like Noah Ark, right? I said, I'm gonna get two people that are gonna like it in year one, and they're gonna tell two people in year two, then four people, then eight, then 16. And in 20 years, I'm gonna have 2 million people because I know math. At, in, like Noah's Ark, two people at a time, but I'm patient. I see too many of these people come in and, and they have the expectation in 90 days. How come I don't have a big as podcast as you, Hakeem? <laughs> I, uh, it, it's the same exact thing. I, I like to take Gary's mantra of micro speed and macro patience um, because I think I, I, I literally try and be super real with them and say, if you can get four people, let's say four people per episode to subscribe just off of the micro content that you put out, then that's positive. You get to episode 25, you got 100 people. 100 people in your audience. Make sure my math is right. You got 100 yeah. people in your audience. You get to episode 100, that's 400 people. And as you consistently grow and consistently grow, it's about base hits, base hits, base hits. You might have that episode where you interview a David Meltzer and his audience comes over, or you interview a, another professional athlete or some influencer in that space where now all of a sudden, you get a solid boost in your audience, but I think it's about consistently hitting base hits and, you know, people, it, it's critical to manage your expectations. Cause you know, if you, if everybody could do it, everybody would do it. You know what I mean? Right. I would say if, if it wasn't hard, everybody would do it. Hard is good, right? It's the protector of the best. You know, when yeah. things are real, you know, Look at playing in the NFL was easy. I would love to do it. You know, I, <laughs> no, I would, right? But it's super hard, man. And, and, and only so many people can do it. But there's other levels. You know, still the most uh, you know extraordinary experience of my life, the best learning of my life, happened to me like you in college football, right? That made Dave Meltzer. And I think from your story of you know not playing and being persistent and consistent, you know, I see you and I are successful in being an entrepreneur because we both, you know, did not have the career in college that we thought we were going to have and had to persevere and learn these character things about rejection and heart and desire and discipline and consistency, pain. All, these are all words that to me make me an extraordinary entrepreneur at 52 years old, even though I was super disappointed when I was in college, how bad I was uh, and how big my, how big my expectations were for myself. <laughs> although, although when I stand next to you, I remind myself there is some difference between me and Hakeem and talent. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I always like to say though, I'm like five to 10% talent. The, the rest is all hard work though. Like, like, I, like, like from our interview, like we talked about, I was, a, I was a bench player until my senior year of college and managing those expectations and swallowing that dose of reality that I wasn't good as the person I was backing up. Like I was nowhere near as good. And like, I came to grips with that, like my freshman year. And it was just like, damn. And then another receiver came in my senior year and I'm like, he's better than me too. A freshman, young freshman. He's on the giants now, Reggie White Jr. Yeah. And, uh, that was when I made the move to tight end, saw an opportunity and took it. <laughs> and that's very entrepreneurial, exactly, right? And that's what today is about, that, hey, there's all these things happening. I'm going to take an opportunity. And I was on with the CBO, C, uh, CEO of Pro Bowlers Association, and the CEO got pregnant, and she created a whole – she wasn't asked. She created a whole presentation why she should take that lady's position while she was gone and ended up doing such a great job she ended up being the CEO, you know, wow. and th this is the type of attitude that you learn. And it's so interesting too, because one of the things we share as we finish up is if you keep continually moving towards the skill or the quantum ability that we do have, you, you, you were born with a quantum ability from selling the Skittles and finding the niche of the Skittles, right? That's a whole nother level than just selling something. And when you're a little kid, it's like, <laughs> I found this niche and Gary, Gary has it too. I know Gary's a shared friend of ours, but you know, like he just has this great ability to find like this very micro niche that has now the reach of millions of people. And as big as, you know, I, I love to tell people cause like, Oh, Dave, you're so big or Hakeem, you guys are so big or, you know, Gary, you're the biggest. I was like, you could put Hakeem, Dave Meltzer, Gary V, Ed Mylad, Tom Bilyeu, you know, all the friends of ours into one group with our entire audience, and we're still a speck on the butt of the humanity. <laughs> That's how big our audience is. There's 4.4 billion people on the internet, right? That's and, oh my God, he has 9 million people. 9 million, That's not, the difference is not when we were little, <laughs> Your, your, your whole audience was your high school, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so we forgot what that felt like to be the, the most popular kid in high school or the hero of high school. And then you get to college and you're like, 
I'm just like a flea on the bench here in, in college. Nobody even knows who I am. And then maybe you get a little taste of that. Well, I do not ever discount, you know, when 45,000 people watch a video of mine. I don't discount that. That's like stepping into Cardinal Stadium, you know, or, you know, twice the fans that the Chargers get. But, you know, literally, you know, for me, I'm like, are you kidding? Every day I get a minimum of this many people that are, <laughs> are on my frequency, right? That's so real. how do you, you know, keep that perspective of audience that no matter how great we are, this audience is unlimited. And we're, you know, for the, the podcast especially, the audiences are unlimited and we're just at the beginning. Like, like esports and podcasts to me, they haven't even seen. I was lucky to be in the internet in 92 and I would tell people, are you kidding? The internet's just <laughs> starting. Wait till 2020 and see how big the internet is if you think it's big in 92. My best way to keep that perspective is me and you, we're both speakers. So we'll, we'll speak to large rooms and we'll speak to small rooms and understanding the power and reach of the internet. I know people who get upset if they put a video on Instagram and 15 people watch it. And then I realized, like, how could you, like, I, I asked them, if you were speaking and I told you you could speak to a room of 15 people and they, all of them had your attention, would you do it? All of them say yes. I said, what's the difference of doing that on a social platform? If 15 people watch it, there's, in a, in a 2020 virtual world, there's no difference in that. And that's honestly how I keep my perspective. If I, can, if I have 20 people watching me, I'm extremely grateful, extremely blessed. And as that just consistently grows, because you know, we make our money in other ways. We don't necessarily make our money from our audience. So it's, it's a way to essentially just take your time. You know, especially if, you don't, if you're not trying to make a million dollars tomorrow from your audience, then what's the point of rushing for these different vanity, vanity metrics and arbitrary numbers when it just comes to a following? Yeah, I'll give you one more to use that'll help you a little coaching. So what, what about the fact that I would fly to New York for a one hour meeting from someone that wants to do business with me? Right. I'd fly to New York for a one hour meeting for someone to do business with me. So if I have 10 people watch my video and one of them wants to do business with me, like and, and I all I did was like it's less time and easy. Like, but yet people are blown away. Like, why would you do that? Because I've flown to New York for one meeting for one hour to do one person. And I didn't even have a, a guarantee that it would do business. Now, if I get 10 people to watch something in one of them, that's a huge win. That's real. Right? That's real. It's, it's, it's hard for people to put that into perspective though. It's yeah. extremely hard for people. That's our that. job. That's our job to give them that perspective. And I appreciate everything, man. I appreciate the tour of your fourplex. I'm looking at the ceilings right now. Looks like oh, it's actually, ready it's to sell. Actually, <laughs> hilarious. actually, quick question for you awesome. before, before we... Uh, before before I head off of here, can I yeah. ask you a quick question? Um, with my yeah, please perspective, low of me because I know you're just a man of wisdom, and I'm not sure the next time we're going to be able to connect. Um, we we pretty much work with more people who are over 35 years old. Like we, I think if you're under 35, you should be able to figure out how to start your podcast, or you're not going to be successful anyway. Um, that's that's just real. Um, yeah. But what, if you had a media agency that focus on podcast production what would you what would be your number one way to market to that that age demographic yeah so what you want to do is look at five things one credibility right so you're going to use all the people you're already working with so to build your credibility and the relationship capital you already have so leverage gary me i have a podcast agency so i'll hook you up as well anyone out there that wants to talk to todd armstrong so i'm on the other side feeding you deals uh, as a channel part as a channel partner so credibility then you got the emotional attachment about you know m micro to macro you got that side of it and, and the value that's there then get really good at, at for people over 35 if you can quantify the reasons they want to do it that are outside of following right the, outside the vanity side and you yeah. talk about the pragmatic side like i did how much are you spending on one meeting right how much do you spend on one meeting or one prospect and then talk about the impact of that one prospect and then the capabilities of podcasting that you have to set it up for them to get to four and how much money. So I would walk them right through, look, I'm the most credible. I work with the world's best Two, here's the emotional attachment of why it can be fun for you or whatever else. But most importantly, how much do you pay for a meeting? And here's why you're going to get more meetings, sell more stuff, 
and we have the capability to get you up and running and you have the capability to do this and it's easier than what you're doing today. Can you see any reason you won't want to move forward? But I can accelerate your business Im immediately, bro. So just reach back out. You got my cell phone. Call me this weekend and I'm more than happy. Yeah. And anybody else that wants, just text me at 949-298-2905 or email me, david at dbeltzer.com. Uh, and I look forward to it. I, I'm always so proud of you. Like, I feel like your Uncle Dave. I sit there and go, this guy's so amazing. <laughs> Ever since the cell phone and the Skittle stories, next time I have you on, we'll tell the cell phone, uh, the screen the screen fixing service, which is extraordinary as well. But you are a true entrepreneur and even more importantly than me, you're a good friend, buddy. And I'm, I'm proud of you. Thank you so much. Stay healthy and happy. That sounds great. I appreciate you, my friend. I'll be talking to you soon. I'll give you a call this weekend. Please do. Thanks, Hakeem. Take care. Yeah. Bye. All right. Great football player, but better entrepreneur. Let's just be honest. Uh, and he is just an extraordinary, extraordinary guy. Um, hey, in about two hours and nine minutes, we're doing training on exactly this, building an audience, creating a community. Uh, you saw two people, Cindy Eckert from the Pink Ceiling and Sprout Pharmaceuticals, host the Pink Cast podcast. If you got a podcast out there you want to start, especially if you're over 35, get in touch with at HackVallis80. Uh, Hakeem will we'll reach out to us as well. Most importantly, everybody invite your family, friends, et cetera, excluding Trevor Moad, one of my good friends and mentors, just a genius from Occidental College, one of the many uh, of the few. That's what my new motto for Occidental is. We are the geniuses, one of the many of the few. Uh, anyway, everybody join me today. Text me if you haven't registered already, 949-298-2905. Email me, david at dmeltzer.com, or just register straight out at dmeltzer.com forward slash training. It's free, free, free. Why won't you join me or at least watch the replay for free? We're going to give some great information. I promise you. Everybody join us. Uh, there's the website for Hakeem today. I'll be back on this weekend as well, helping people answering questions. But most importantly, whatever you do, be kind to your future self and do good deeds. Have fun. Take care.